Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth and final video in the uh, kind of video walkthroughs and guides for the Linux Offset Club um, online war game. You can find it online at linux.offset.club, but let's finish it up here. I'm going to change directory into the Linux Offset folder we've been working out of. Um, in the last video, we had gotten the password for user 13. That was a really cool uh, recursive base64 problem. So now let's jump back in. User 13 SSH from the Linux Offset Club. Connectivity's a little slow here. All right, I paused the video and now we are logged in. Cool. So what is this? Now we have a challenge and a challenge.c. So we have kind of a, huh, a C program that we're working with, the uh, executable binary here in our in our home directory. Can we just cat out password.txt? No, I guess not. Well, why not? Ah, we have to be uh, row. Only root can read it, and it looks like this challenge is a set UID binary. You can tell by that S here. So only this binary can read it. Only user 14 or root. Huh. Okay, we're not user 14, we're user 13, so root is the only option, and we got to do that through this binary. Well, at least we have the source code. Let's look at that a little more closely. So, include C headers, our main function by default. What we do is we create a buffer, 1,000 characters long, by default the null byte, um, and we loop through 1,000 times, okay, and then we read into the buffer, standard input, okay, so we type into it, and then we check if the length of the buffer is not C, or what we're iterating through, it says failure, okay. So we just have to like enter a string or enter some input that's the same length as the current counter that we're on. All right, let's, let's just try that challenge. What fail five does not equal to one? What, okay, so we only have to, only have to put in one character there? No, fail two. Okay, so the new line character must be being read as well, right? So enter nothing in that new in that first line. One, okay, still good. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have to do this a thousand times. We can't really do this by hand. Okay, geez. Well, how do we do this? Um. I'm going to do it in Python, right? Because that might be easy. And we can use Python tax C just to do it from the command line. Print A times 1 or something, or times 2. And that's that's real easy. So we can do a for i in range 1,000. Print A times i. Oh, boy. <laughs> is, that doing, is that doing what we want it to be doing? Is that doing what we think it should be doing? Okay. Shrinking the range down to 10, looks like it is doing exactly what we want. So let's crank it back up to 1,000, and all this input we can pipe into the challenge. Oh, boy, okay, geez, that was like lightning fast. I hope you kind of understand how that happened theoretically. When we gave it just like 10, it created all these characters, all these inputs, uh, and we broke, like, ramped that up to maybe 100 or even 1,000, what it's asking for, all that input, we could just give it to the binary, pipe it in, and it looks like it ran through all of it and just spit out the password for us. So, okay, there's the password for user 14. Sweet. Let's get into uh, user 14. Where are we at now? All right, another uh, binary that looks like a set UID binary. And, okay, we can only read password.txt. Oh, can, re can we read password.txt in this? Oh, I'm stupid. I logged into user 15. What went wrong? Did I, is user, is user 13? I'm confusing myself, stand by. Okay, no, I guess I am just confusing myself because they happen to have the user 14 password 
in the home directory of user 14. Uh, I guess th they must have had to do that because of uh, the the last challenge or something. I don't know. Whatever. We can look at challenge dot c because this is the attempt for user 15 here. Using this challenge, it's not what it's not what the last one was. So let's check out what the difficulty is here. Oh, not the binary. Let's check out the source code. See, it's more C code, C headers, main function. Okay, the password, you can't get it. Okay, that's clearly not the password. Let's use our deductive reasoning, and the noggin says that's probably not it, but we need to be able to read user 15 password. Okay, so it reads an input over the length of the password, but it's incrementing by four. So why? Like a T. Somewhere, okay, somewhere along, like pieces of that string, it reads in a number, puts it in a temporary variable, the address of, and it tests if temp is not equal to the integer form of that character in the password, it spits up and breaks. Okay, weirdness, right? Huh. So the way that I solve this is actually by kind of going back home. Let's make a temporary directory. We do this in dev shm for shared memory. Nice. Okay, whatever. Um, and let's put a directory in there for ourselves. Cool. I actually just stole the source code and wanted to modify it on my own. I don't have a password that I can read out of in the in the database, but since we can just work with this string on our own, we can see what values it's actually expecting this temp variable to be. We don't need to read any input, but let's actually change this line to not test if temp is equal to this, but let's actually set temp equal to the password or what we would expect to see from it here. And then let's just print out what temp is. We can use the printf here. And this format specifier, percent %d, is printing out that integer, that the decimal. And let's, let's give it a new line so we can see things clearly. And let's just give it the temp variable that we have just set to what we want to be able to enter for the password. Oh, I think I have a uh, extra parentheses in here. Yep. So now we're not cutting this out. We're doing the same loop that we were before, but we're just getting the value they expected to see. Totally messed up with white space, sorry. <laughs> uh, and we're just printing it out to the screen, so we have an idea of what it's actually looking for. Let's try this. Let's compile that source code. No errors. Now we have a directory or a file in our directory called a.out. It's the default executable name, and these are the values <laughs> that I guess it's seeing for the pointer or whatever nonsense is is those integers that it, it expects. So let's bring this back to the server over here, right? And let's run the challenge and paste in these values. And boom, cool. Just as easy as that, we get the password for user 15. Let's check this out, man. Let's go ahead and put this in um, our our files, our archives here. This is the password for user 15, cool. So now if we went to user 15, paste in the password, check it out, password.txt. Ah, this is the end. It's the same password because this is the very last level. That's what it says online, on the internet, user 15 is the last user. So we made it, we finished. We got to the end of the Linux Offset Club. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Uh, I want to share with you, I have uh, some of the code that I had written in some of this in some of these challenges uh, on my GitHub, uh, accessible for my, uh, my personal GitHub. And the repository is called Linux Offensive Security Club with underscores in the name. Um, it has all the passwords that I had found, and some of these I had .sh scripts for bash scripts, where I'm using the SSH pass, uh, just be able to automate 
the connection through SSH. Uh, with the password that you've already obtained in some of those other files, you just it's just getting the output from those files here, SSHing into them, and then running these commands. Same thing for the public key in level four. Um, some of these were, were using the asterisk again, changing directories and stuff like that. Um, some of them where I had to do the things that couldn't really be automated, like the base 64 stuff, or um, what is it? I don't know what another, yeah, the base 64 one for level nine is another good example. Um, the recursive base 64 stuff, I think it could do. Um, the ones where we're using a challenge, like we had seen with the password uh, Python one, one of these uh, may have been gone, may have gone through or not. But if you wanted to check out some of these files, I don't know, I'm, I'm running out of words here, but I just want to show with you they are on my GitHub account. And certainly feel free to check out my GitHub account. It's just my name, John Hammond, and hopefully you'll be able to find some good stuff in there. Um, thanks, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. Super small, kind of easy, really just a speed run, but at the same time, I hope you're learning some good things. So thank you guys for watching, thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you in the next set of videos.